Hi, I'm Jason. Welcome to my workshop. I wish I could share my latest, greatest project with you. The truth is I don't have one because about five weeks ago, I had a pretty nasty workshop injury. I hurt my hand here on the jointer. It's not a tool I ever thought I'd really hurt myself on. You don't hear much about jointer injuries, at least I didn't. And I'm not gonna go into too many of the terrible details. Or I'm not gonna show you any gross pictures. I don't wanna gross you out or scare you or anything like that. What I hope you'll gain from this video and from my experience going through this is how to approach this tool more safely in the future and how to help you prevent this from ever happening in the future. I'll tell you what did happen. I fed my right hand right into the cutter head. I'm not exactly sure how it happened. It was one of those things that happened in the blink of an eye. What I will tell you is that I lost about a quarter of an inch off my right ring finger and my middle finger was severely lacerated. I had lots of stitches, I had surgery. Good news is I still have most of my finger and I'll be able to do woodworking for many years to come. It could have been much worse. I'm gonna share my experience with you, show you what I think I did wrong. Again, I'm not exactly 100% sure what went wrong, but what I think went wrong, and I'll share what I'm going to do going forward to make sure this never ever happens again. Okay, so I'll do my best to explain what happened. Again, it happened so fast that I'm not 100% sure, but I've got a couple theories. One is that I was edge jointing a piece just like this. This is about five inches wide. And ordinarily when I'm edge jointing, I've got my left hand here. My fingers are pushing against the fence because I've already got one flat face from having face jointed already. And then I've got my thumbs here. So I've got my eyes on my fingers and I know where they are. And normally there's a cutter guard there and I don't have to worry about it. And in the past, I have held the trailing end like this, thumb as sort of a catch on the end, and then my index finger here. So I'd be going over the cutter head and then transferring pressure to this side, to the outfeed side, because that's proper technique. And then my fingers are safe as I go all the way across. I didn't do that this time. Here's what I think I did. My left hand was where it always was. My right hand, I had my thumb on top of the board, and now you can see where my fingers are. So what happened is I fed my hand right into the cutter. And I must have dropped down right at the end because it involved three fingers. Again, I'm not gonna show you a close up, but just know that this finger is now a quarter of an inch shorter than it used to be. So that was one problem. The other problem was that this cutter guard was not working properly and I knew it wasn't working properly. It had been sort of hanging open like this for quite a while and I had been meaning to fix it. In fact, I ordered a new spring for it. In fact, I put the new spring in it. What I didn't do was tension the spring properly and I meant to get to it and gosh, you know, I thought it's just a couple of quick cuts. I've done this a million times. Well, you know what? That's when bad things like this happen. So don't ever say to yourself, oh, just a couple of quick cuts. So again, my hand was too low here. The cutter guard was hanging open. Now, would the cutter guard have saved me? Probably not, because the way I was feeding this board, you can see that even though the cutter guard is now functioning properly, my fingers are just right in the path of that cutter head. So it may have made my injury not quite as severe, but I don't think it would have saved me altogether. So that's what I did and that's how I made my mistake. Here's how I'm gonna to try to avoid that going forward. So I don't wanna suggest you just throw money at the problem like I did here, but I did some research online and I think I found a good solution for me. I just need a good visual reminder, if nothing else, to keep my hand and fingers away from that cutter head. But also this gives me a little bit of physical protection too. So these are a couple of mag switch jigs. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in buying one or both of these. This one's a stacked feather board and this is pretty cool. So feathers on the top and bottom, and you turn these knobs and it puts clamping force against the bed and the fingers of the feather board push my workpiece tight to the fence. So what does that do for me? Well, I physically can't feed my fingers in like this anymore. I have to have my hand up here away from the spinning cutter head 
and I can push through like that. And on the outfeed side, I've got the, this is actually a resaw fence. I'm gonna be purchasing another set of uh, fingers, I think, uh, feather boards. So what this does is it's putting pressure against the fence like this so my fingers don't have to be here. Now I'm already away from the cutter head at that point, but it just seems like a nice feature to have. So now all I have to do is I keep my hand on the trailing end going over the cutter. So it's only over there for an instant. The guard's working now. And as I'm feeding it through, I'm pushing here and I'm pushing down with my left hand because I have to have pressure on the outfeed side going through like that. Now, what if I have a narrower workpiece? Well, just grab a push stick and I can push through like this. And now my hand, my left hand is the one creating downward pressure. I'm protected by the guard. I just have to, again, be very careful where my fingers are. But the nice thing is I don't have to have my hand down here pushing against the fence. I know that that device will do it for me. So I could just put pressure on the outfeed side, push all the way through, and I'll have a nice straight edge. So again, this accident was 100% my fault. I was not paying close enough attention to where my fingers were when I was using the jointer. I didn't fix the guard when I knew it was broken. And I can tell you in the future, I'm going to pay a lot more attention to where my fingers are when using this tool or any of my machines in the workshop. Hope you found this video really helpful. I hope it prevents you from getting hurt. And if you like this video or any of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you'll ring the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I've got a new video posted. We'll see you soon.